So good evening, everybody. We are here for the grand finale. So it is May 15th. We've been 15, 15 days in a row. Uh, you've had 14 days with your sensor on and we've had such an amazing time. So this is our rapid fire. What did we learn in the past 14 days? Okay, so we began with this. If you remember, this was my journey. I went from Costa Rica to the Sahara. And what did I learn in those 15, 20 years? I learned how to balance my blood sugar. I went from being someone that was uh, cranky and having difficulty with having hypoglycemia episodes. And then I became a person that was full of joy, independent, absolute freedom, because I didn't have to eat at a regular basis. I was able to skip some meals. So we learned about insulin. And I hope now you have a much greater awareness of that insulin is this key hormone that can cause a lot of problems in the body and that by regulating our blood sugar, that's the very first step to helping control insulin in our body as well. And if you remember back over two weeks ago, you wrote down what your why was for joining the challenge and your intention for those 14 days. So then we put our monitors on and we started scanning. <laughs> so then we came to day one. So if you remember day one, uh, we started tracking things in our food journal. And this the goal of this was to start to associate what was going on with the food that we ate and how we were feeling in our body. And remember, it was all about body awareness that whole week. We ate as we usually do so that we could see the trends and the impact on our body. And already at day one, we began to start talking about a few things. Remember, we spoke about the dawn effect and that's when your blood sugar starts to rise naturally in the morning. We talked about how wearing the Freestyle Libra sensor, if you take a super hot shower or if you have really intense exercise, that it actually can alter your readings. And for some people, if you sleep on the side, it can cause your readings to be altered as well. Uh, we discussed as well what is called the hemoglobin A1C, which is that three month average of your blood sugar and how on the Freestyle Libra we're able to access that number. We had our very first snapshot of what a fruit smoothie can do. And remember, we've all had little highs and lows since that time over two weeks ago. And as we were beginning our journey, um, we all, many of us had decided to, to, uh, to take an affirmation, something that we would look at in the morning, something that would resonate with us as we went through this journey over the 14 days. And then we had the wonderful Sarah Bastanoia from Diabetes Educator here in Bermuda. And Sarah had so many wonderful takeaways. Some a, a lady that's been 30 years in this business. Let's see. So she talked about meal composition, protein, fats, and carbs. We want to get it all together. We really want that protein there to delay gastric emptying, to make us feel full longer, and also so we don't get as much of a sugar spike. Sarah spoke about cold fruits and tropical fruits and how those cold Canadian fruits we can often get by a little easier but when it comes to tropical fruits like melon, watermelon, uh, papaya, we have to watch those a little bit more because they can spike our blood sugar. She also spoke about one of the key things, which is stabilizing your breakfast. Because once breakfast is good, the rest of the day starts to balance itself out. And then we move on. Then we downloaded our first little bit of data and I was showing you how to uh, download your data on the Freestyle Libra um, app and so that you could share your data with me so that I could do some health overviews. And then we came to Roslyn on day four. So remember Roslyn? So Roslyn Cure is a nutrition, a keto nutrition health coach, um, and she shared her journey of what she's learned uh, over the past 10, 15 years, how she's lost weight, and she used the ketogenic diet approach to do that. Rosalind shared her key takeaways. I remember her saying it's an 80-20 life. So don't be so hard on ourselves that we're in this for the long run and that you want to normalize your weight for the rest of your life. There is no race. We know that when racing, sometimes we stumble and fall. So take your time. It's okay to, to have a pound or two weight loss a week, but stick with things that you're going to enjoy. Um, she also spoke that ketosis, we spoke that it, it's therapeutic, that for many people that a ketogenic, which is a less than 20 grams a day carb diet, can help with seizures, it can help with many different health conditions. So it was wonderful for Rosalind to share with us. And then we came to day six. So day six, we started recording our first sugar hacks. And if you remember this, 
um, what our goal was, and you all started to do this, was to find one of our hacks and to see how you lowered it down. And I'm hoping some of you will share that with us tonight. And we also found how early on that we noticed a few things that were making those hacks go up. By takeout food, having chicken teriyaki, what could be in your fish chowder? Um, and then we spoke about how chia seed, um, chia seed pudding can be really good for us or overnight chia seeds instead of that oatmeal that was causing a lot of crazy spikes. And then we spoke about HALT, if you remember, hungry, angry, lonely, tired, and thirsty, starting to pay attention to why we're eating and not just putting the food in our mouths. So then we were into week two. So week two, we, we began by looking at some updates. So we downloaded some of your data because what we were looking for is precision nutrition, how you can customize food to what is good for your body. We wanted to get out of those Himalaya peaks and try to have things on your meter as something as a more of a rolling hill. What do we learn that night? If you remember, we remembered that stock can often contain sugar. So someone had shared a recipe for, I think, a lentil bean soup, and there was sugar in the chicken stock or the veggie stock that she was using. So we have to pay attention to the ingredients that are on food and the labels, which kind of goes even a little bit further which is why for some of us kind of cooking at home can be a really great thing. And we also learned how exercise can really impact our blood sugars. And we saw how one of our members that went on a two hour walk, we saw how it started to stabilize her blood sugars very well for the rest of the day. Then we moved on. So more of our personal data uh, reviews, which is what I just discussed. And it was so much fun to pull your numbers up on the big screen and uh, to go over where your, your, your peaks and your lows were and how we started to see some associations with um, sleep time and how that would cause that rise in the blood sugars in the morning as well. And remember the top 10 tips, I'll go over these again. Eat real food. If it doesn't have a barcode, you're probably doing okay. Try to shorten your eating window. So eat in the eight to 10 hour window. Eat from eight to four, nine to five, 10 to six. We know that can help. Don't eat before bed. We saw what happened over these past two weeks. We saw those blood sugar spikes even into the wee hours in the morning. And then often we saw that rebound the next day with the sugar high again. We uh, learned to eat mindfully, to slow down, to chew your food well, no TV, sit there and enjoy your meals. We talked about no carbs on an empty stomach. Or as Sarah says, no naked carbs. We always wanna pair our carbs with food. We discussed taking a short walk after your meals that can help to lower that glucose spike and also trying to reduce the number of meals that you eat a day, two to three meals and cut down on your snacking. When we spoke about food order, the important thing was to eat your veggies first and your carbs last. Uh, some of you have tried the apple cider vinegar before your meals or in the morning. And then overall, if we focus on muscle strengthening exercises, that muscle is gonna build mitochondria. We're gonna increase our metabolic rate just at rest. So that's a healthy way to go when it comes to fitness. And then for those of you that tried the nut bar challenge, uh, I think I should get ads from Kirkland for this, but people are loving this bar and uh, you can let me know if it spiked your sugar, but I have many that it did not raise your blood sugar. Then we came to day eight. So we had another wonderful guest and this was Trina Sutherland who's a pharmacist in Miramichi, New Brunswick. And Trina spoke about her experience and also about hormones and blood sugar. A few of the highlights that we spoke about is that menopause, which many women have been going through, we start to see this rise in um, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. 2.4 times rise going through menopause, which is often why women you're starting to struggle with insulin resistance and higher sugars if you're going through menopause. We also learned about this whole interplay of the hormones. So what's going on? How does estrogen actually work to help us overcome insulin resistance for many individuals? So that's hormone replacement. And then we spoke about how those that are on uh, birth control, things like Depo-Provera, and even the old fashioned, the regular birth control pill can have an impact on our blood glucose regulation, um, which can affect both us and maybe our family members as well. 
And remember Trina said as well, when we were speaking of hormones, um, the concerns that we had with our joints was a progesterone. We talked about estrogen, which was our cotton brain um, and our libido and our testosterone, which was our muscle mass and strength. So then we moved on to our dietitians. So it was so great to have Layla Bateman and Keelan Hankin from Island Nutrition here uh, in downtown Bermuda. Many great takeaways, but I'll list just a few. One was not to exclude food groups. We know now that you can have a little bit of fruit if you have it as a dessert. There's a different response on your body when you eat food alone or if you're having it as part of the meal. So you don't have to exclude. And some of you even found that, that you could have a little dessert, uh, maybe a small piece of pie or a little cookie if it was in association with your meal. We spoke about the quality of breakfast once again. That was a big theme going through and how you want to match that protein, uh, you know, a fruit or a veggie, your fat, and also getting your fiber in there. We spoke overall about that food composition of meals. And I think Keelan shared about how we want to have a half of our plate as vegetables, and then we can have a quarter of starch, and then we can have a quarter of protein. Uh, we got into when we're having our snacks that we always want to, once again, match a protein if we're going to have a carbohydrate. And we spoke about protein, how it's so important for us and how many women in particular, we underdose protein, but we don't want to miss that. Protein is an essential amino acid. We need it for throughout all of our body. So don't skip on it. And we spoke about mindful eating, slowing down, paying attention. Then we came to day 10. So day 10, we had Nursa Douglas. So Nursa is a nutritionist here in Bermuda and she, her site is Eat All the Pickles on Instagram. So we spoke a lot about gut health and a few of the takeaways that I had from Nursa. Number one is if you remember, Nursa spoke about diversity and that there was a study released that showed we need 30 different types of fruits and vegetables and grains and spices and herbs throughout the day. And how would you start to play around with your food? You can add things in easily like cilantro, so basil, peppers, um, any type of turmeric, any type of season. So she really focused on the herbs and the spices and that there is value in those foods. There's micronutrients that we can't often get in other areas. Then she also spoke about uh, fermented foods, things like sauerkraut, kimchi, and we spoke about pre and probiotics. Uh, we learned a lot about that and there's so much more to learn when it comes to having that variety of food. And remember as well, nurses spoke about the brain gut connection, how we need to slow down with our meals and also the impact that stress can have on our digestion. Then we came to more blood sugar reviews. And if you remember, I shared some of my values with you. And do you remember what this spike was? This is when Dr. Tiffany, she made it up to 190. I shocked myself, but I did. What did I have? Remember, it was that day that I had the vegetarian burger the plantain fries, and that 20 grams of fruit juice called an Izzy. So when we think we're eating vegan, you have to sometimes rethink that because carbs still need to be matched. And overall, if your carbs are outbalancing your protein and fat, you're gonna run into a high spike. Even for me, that generally has a sugar in the 70 to 130 zone. And then we went through a few other changes that we had seen. So many wonderful. So this was 14 days. This is one of our members, one of you. So this was May the 2nd. Look at these sugars. They were completely above the top, barely even touching into the gray zone. And look at this, this lady, by the end of those two weeks, we're seeing most things are in the gray. Um, much, this is just in 14 days, 14 days of paying attention. And then we had another, um, patient that I shared her values. And if you recall, this was two different blood sensors. So this was from April 16th to 29th. She was just diagnosed with a hemoglobin A1C of 11%. Look at her numbers here, how wide the range was. By the time she got on her second patch, her values, this is what we had with her second patch. And yes, she did need some medications, but just to show you that with tweaking in a very short period of time, you can get your numbers down. Her average for this two weeks was 6% and her daytime, her blood sugar average was 112, down from 127 in just over a two-week time period. 
And also that night as we were reviewing, uh, we spoke a little bit about blood sugars and what can actually be a safe sugar for your blood that doesn't spike a response. So we looked at this one, it's called monk fruit or Lacanto. We spoke about stevia, we spoke about swerve or erythritol and even allulose. And I found out that it comes from figs and walnuts and wheat. And, but these are all natural de derivatives of food that won't have a glycemic response in your body. So then we got to day 14. So, wow, you know, the week flew by and our time is flying by, but we were here with functional medicine health coach, Becky Spencer. And that was just last night. And we really got into things and we were able to have an open, uh, a closed private, closed group. And we really had a lot of great shares and takeaways. But some of uh, Becky's key takeaways were about mindset. And if you recall what we spoke about, being curious. And I think you would all mostly agree that in this 14 days, as you're scanning, you're doing it because you're curious. You want to see what's happening when you have that food. What happens if I have a little bit less? What happens if I change my food order? We also became curious about food cravings. So when, that, when we were starting to crave food and we could scan the monitor, it's like, Am I really hungry? And if you saw the sugar was going down, well, maybe that is a hunger cue. Or were you eating for those other reasons that we were, maybe we were angry, we were lonely, we were tired, we were thirsty, we were hormonal, but we started to pay attention to our cravings. The other thing that Becky spoke about is what is the, the story that we're telling ourselves? So we started out by looking at the numbers, but we know deep down there's a lot going on inside. You know, we are kind of complicated. And for some that have been trying to lose weight for a number of time, it's that again and again, what we tell ourselves. And then we spoke a little bit about intuition and that if we start to pay attention, we'll realize what the regular response, the response should be in our body. And we can actually start to choose the foods that our body is really um, needing at that time. And then one of our great takeaways by one of the members is that um, she shared that we should all begin with an attitude of gratitude. And that when we do that, we can start our day off on the right foot, and then the rest of the day can go much better. So, and here we are tonight, our recap and our next steps. So what I'd like you to do, and we're going to open things up in just a moment, is if you have your little journals there, I want you to get out your journal or your initial form that you filled out about what your intention was for why you did this. And then we'll, I want you to start thinking about what your takeaways were. And then I'm gonna introduce how we're gonna get together for our next steps. All right, so that was a lot to do, okay? So um, if you like now, I'd love for you to turn your um, images back on. I am gonna pause the recording. Actually, I can't, so I'm just gonna pause it. All right, so it was great to have our breakout and to hear the shares. You ladies, you really do inspire me. I'm so happy. It's been 14 days, but 14 days of really being able to see you have those aha moments and to share with you. So then my question is what, and this I knew this would come up, is how do we stay connected? So one of the things that I wanted to share with you is I am gonna be creating what's called Dr. Tiffany's Inner Circle. OK, because I, one of the things I'm trying to see is how we can get the information again out of the office and into um, many of you, because some of you are my patients, some of you are in Canada. And so I've done many online groups before and kind of like this, you know, I've done a group in the past that was um, I've done a group in the past that was for a gut health reset. And so uh, these programs are wonderful, but we, what we always found is that we needed ongoing support. And, you know, I was starting to think about, well, how do we get support in the community? So we know Weight Watchers works, right? Why does Weight Watchers work? Because once a week you go and you get accountability. We know that Alcoholics Anonymous works and Narcotics Anonymous, because once a week you're going and you're having accountability, being surrounded by other individuals. So I'm going to be starting uh, Dr. Tiffany's Inner Circle. And it's going to be focused on what I feel are the seven pillars of health. And also within my practice, these are the seven pillars that I'm going to begin to focus and hone in on more with all my patients. So the seven pillars, 
So the first four you will understand, okay? Of course, it's what we eat. And that's what we've been talking about this week, these two weeks with the challenge, but it's how we move. It's also how we breathe. The breath is very important for our metabolism and the quality uh, and the length of the sleep that we have. So those are our four fundamentals. But what is also vitally important to us is the way we think. And we spoke about this, um, how that having an attitude of gratitude can actually make a difference. And then the sixth thing that's very important, and it goes along with thinking, is how we speak. Because as we speak, we create. And what comes out of our mouths, and we're not talking, we, we focus so much on what goes in, right, and the foods, but how we speak to ourselves, to others around us, that actually has energy as well. And then the fundamental pillars of all of this in health, these seven pillars, is connection. And I don't believe that any of us can exist without it. We grew up in communities and we know that in families, people thrive and survive better. We know that if we look at the blue zones where people live into their hundreds, it's because they had a very tight knit community. And so we can't all have those communities. You know, we can't just all hop on a plane and you can't all come to the beach here with me in Bermuda. But for those of us that are in Bermuda, I do plan within the inner circle that once or twice a year, we'll have connections. Um, and also we'll have our cookups, which we'll probably continue to do at the Diabetes Center. And we'll move through as we go, um, we'll move through these six pillars over the next 12 months. And the first pillars that we're gonna be focusing on is gonna be our foundation. So it's gonna be our fundamentals. So we're gonna go through uh, the exercise that I would take a lot of my patients through, and it's gonna be a full health review. And I'm gonna kind of focus on the key numbers that are most important, what you wanna look for in your health numbers. If, you, um, if I'm not your doctor, things that you can ask your physician for, and then we'll come back and show how to interpret that. Then once we get our fundamentals down and you learn the basics, then we're going to move on to do a two-week um, cleanse. We'll call it a gut reset. So during that cleanse, this is very similar to what I do with many of my patients that have gut health issues. But we know that for many individuals, when you cut out sugar, dairy, gluten, and eggs for some, that we can actually see another big source of health gains. And for those that are interested, they will integrate that intermittent fasting in those two-week time period. And it's not so scary when you do it with others. You know, um, two months ago, we did a five-day challenge and I promised I was going to do, we were going to do a fast. So as part of what we'll be doing on one of our inner circle meetups is that we will actually even get more into fasting. So we're going to le learn the fundamentals first. We're going to move into that two-week kind of cleanse and gut reset. And then we're going to begin to focus on these principles. So what's going to happen with our little circle get together? So I'm proposing to do this on Wednesdays at noon. And the reason is I want you to think of Wednesday as a brown bag lunch, if you're at work. The sessions would last from about 12 to 12.45. So the first 20 minutes is gonna be a very quick, it's gonna be a case review. So I've got lots of stories and I think we learn from stories from people that are sharing what they went through. And then we're gonna have open office with Dr. Keenan, okay? So these are gonna be open office hours that you can ask me anything. Now, for those of you in the office, you know, we get 15 minutes, sometimes we get 30 minutes, but often there's just a lot of questions that you have and we're not able to answer them in all that time period. So this is what this inner circle is going to be dedicated to doing. So um, that's kind of how it's going to work. And the plan is that I will be starting this in June. So it'll be just in two weeks time. And for those of you that are going to be watching this video, as part of the membership, when you sign up to become a part of the inner circle, I'm actually gonna do a health review for you. I don't have time to do an, int uh, an intense review, but one of the things I'm gonna send out for those that want to register um, for our initial group is I'm gonna send out a health questionnaire. Now, this is what I use when I do my functional medicine assessments uh, when I in Canada. Um, and in Bermuda, I take time because I spend it in the office, but it's an online questionnaire. It takes you about 20 minutes to fill it out. And for everyone that registers, I'm going to go in and I'm going to review that questionnaire. I'm going to set up a timeline for you. And I'm going to look at some of the, the top things that I'm looking at from your health review. And I'm going to give you a, a few key steps that you can begin with. 
And then with that knowledge, you're going to be able to still meet with me every week. Okay. Now, this is not, you'll still need your family physician to help you along the way, but this is going to be a few guiding steps to get you started. And then if you wanted to work with a health coach or nutritionist, I can put you in touch with other individuals because I have many people here in Bermuda um, that we can have some connections. And I also have many people still back in Canada. So think of the circle is our meeting place. It's our meetup. And once we get through our, for our fundamentals, we're going to start to build out and get ourselves accountability partners, or we're going to get buddies because we know when we check in with someone else, even if it's just five or 10 minutes, you meet up once a week, how are you doing? This is the secret to success. You know, I've been to many conferences and I'm a member of many groups. And what has worked best for me is I'm a member of an inner circle group and we meet every Friday. We've been doing that for two years. And I'm so excited because this Thursday, I'm gonna get to meet them when I go to England on a retreat together. And so in the future someday, I would love this inner circle to turn into a retreat at some point so we could start to really continue the connection. Because we see that the world is moving really fast right now. And we see that healthcare is moving fast. We have a lot of automated devices. We have things like the Freestyle Libra, but we also have things like aura rings. We have watches and soon we're gonna even have more. And we know that technology is great and I want to use technology. I feel that if we don't use it, it's gonna overcome us. But what I want to teach you is I want to teach you to become the captains of your ship. I want you to know how to take those tools and how to translate it into actionable steps, things that you can do to change uh, your life and to transform yourself on that um, pathway to help. So this is where I think I finish up tonight. And I'm just gonna close up here now. And I want to thank you all. And so for the membership group, I guess I should say. So for this membership group, so this one, I wanted to make this very reasonably priced for people to attend. And I was looking at the cost of Weight Watchers and I was looking at the cost of Jenny Craig and these programs. And so um, I, I thought I put a very reasonable price down of $50 monthly for the inner circle. So this will be for, this will be every week, you'll have a live session with me. You're gonna be able to answer questions. What um, you'll be able to ask me the questions and I'll be uh, providing answers to you during those sessions. And for those that register in the first month, you're gonna get that one-on-one uh, -on -one individualized health plan. So I'm just gonna close up now and then if you have any other questions, I'd be happy to take them.